In this episode, we'll dive into the exciting world of co-design and explore seven tips to ensure a successful and inclusive collaborative design process. Co-design is all about bringing diverse stakeholders together to create innovative solutions that cater to everyone's needs. In an earlier episode, we talked about whether co-design is the same as co-innovation, and spoiler alert, it's not. So let's get started and see how co-design helps build bridges for inclusive innovation. Firstly, we need to define goals and objectives. Every successful co-design process begins with a clear definition of goals and objectives. Without a shared vision, efforts can quickly become scattered and valuable resources may go to waste. To avoid this, take the time to engage all stakeholders and ensure they have a thorough understanding of the project's purpose and desired outcomes. Establishing these common ground rules sets the foundation for effective collaboration. Secondly, foster a collaborative environment. Collaboration thrives in an environment of trust and open communication. Ensure that all stakeholders feel comfortable contributing their ideas and opinions without fear of judgment. An inclusive atmosphere allows for the free flow of creativity and fosters a sense of ownership among participants. Embrace diversity and encourage active participation, as it often leads to breakthrough solutions that may not have emerged otherwise. Thirdly, include diverse perspectives. To achieve true inclusivity in co-design involves stakeholders from various backgrounds and experiences. Don't just invite our usual crowd of supportive stakeholders. Seek representatives from different demographics, disciplines, and levels of expertise. The richness of diverse perspectives will lead to more comprehensive solutions that cater to a broad range of users. Take the time to find ways to actively involve those who have struggled to effectively reach in the past. Remember, the more voices that are heard, the more barriers that can be overcome. Next, use design tools and techniques. Co-design isn't just about talk, it's all about action. Use design tools and techniques to stimulate creativity and guide the process. Ideation or brainstorming sessions Sketching ideas and prototyping are powerful methods to refine concepts and make them tangible. These tools encourage stakeholders to engage actively and visually express their thoughts, leading to a deeper understanding of the proposed solutions. And remember our earlier episodes. Mythbuster, is brainstorming really the best ways uh, to generate ideas? And also stop brainstorming, use the 635 method instead. Our fifth tip is to iterate and refine. Co-design is an iterative process where continuous refinement is key to success. Embrace the cycle of ideation, prototyping, testing, and learning. Each iteration provides valuable insights that lead to continuous improvement. Don't shy away from feedback. Instead, welcome it as a step towards creating a design that resonates with everyone involved. Number six is document and communicate. In the co-design journey, effective communication is vital. Documenting the process and outcomes ensures transparency and accountability. Share progress updates, insights gained and prototypes developed with all stakeholders. This ensures there are no surprises for anyone along the journey. Documentation and communication not only keeps everyone informed, but also allows for timely feedback, making adjustments easier and more effective. Drum roll, our seventh and final tip is co-evaluate and learn. Co-design is a learning experience for all involved. After the project reaches its conclusion, take the time to co-evaluate the entire process. Assess what worked well and identify areas for improvement. The lessons learned in one co-design effort can inform and enhance future projects, making each subsequent collaboration even more fruitful. In conclusion, effective co-design empowers stakeholders to contribute meaningfully leading to innovative solutions that address a broader spectrum of needs. By following these seven tips, defining goals, 
fostering collaboration, embracing diversity, utilizing design tools, iterating, documenting, and learning, we can create an inclusive and successful co-design process that yields remarkable results. And that's a wrap, folks. We hope you enjoyed this Enablers of Change episode on effective co-design. You've got seven tips to help you use co-design, but in the spirit of co-design, it's your turn. We'd love to hear from you. Have you had any experiences with co-design? Did you try any of the tips we shared today? Tell us all about it in the comments below the blog post. Your stories and insights can inspire others and add even more value to this conversation. Remember, co-design is all about inclusivity and collaboration and embracing diverse perspectives. So please add your experiences to the discussion. Don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter to stay in the loop about new episodes and exciting content. And if you found value in today's episode, please share it with your friends so they can hop on board too. Thanks for being part of our community and making this journey together. Uh -huh.